Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making gingerbread cookies. So let's get started. To make these amazing cookies, you'll need brown sugar, butter, one egg, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and cloves, vanilla, molasses, salt, baking soda, and flour. First off, we're combining all the dry ingredients, starting with three cups or 360 grams of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of baking soda, in you go. Now it's time for all those amazing spices. One teaspoon of cinnamon. What would gingerbread cookies be without the ginger? Two teaspoons of ground ginger. In you go. It gives the cookies a nice bite. One quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and I love to use the rasp and just get that nice and fresh. It smells so good. Last up, a conservative quarter teaspoon of cloves, or it really smells like the holidays. One quarter teaspoon of salt, in you go. Just shake that out. You don't have to use the sifter, it's totally fine. I just like to do it in case there's any giant piece of a spice hanging out. It would be like a big mouthful. Grab a whisk, 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 and we're gonna set this aside and grab a mixer out. You could use a hand mixer. I'm using my stand mixer with a paddle attachment. I'm adding three quarters of a cup or 170 grams of unsalted room temperature butter. I'm gonna cream this up just really quickly. I wanna make sure it's nice and soft. You know that when we're baking on a cold winter's day, that countertop just sucks the heat out of everything, so it's always a good idea just to give that butter a quick cream. I also want three quarters of a cup of brown sugar packed into this thing. If you're using a scale, that's gonna be about 160 some grams, 165-ish. Lock that mixer off. We're gonna mix it up until it's nice and creamy, and yes, you might wanna scrape the bowl down. Uh, I wasn't kidding about that scrape. Makes a difference. If you're using a hand mixer, you actually don't have to do it very much at all because the mixing uh, beaters really like rake the bowl on the inside. Back to mixing. And in the meantime, let's measure out three quarters of a cup of molasses. This is going to be the amazing depth of flavor in our cookie. Add that molasses in there. Wow. Really get that molasses mixed in well before you add the egg or anything else in. It just makes your life much, much easier. You know brown sugar is just regular sugar rubbed with molasses. <laughs> makes it so delicious. Mix that up. I'm gonna crack my egg into this measuring cup just so I know there's no shell in there. One egg and one teaspoon of vanilla. You're probably gonna notice that your mixture's broken. We added a lot of molasses in there and it's not emulsifying with the butter. That's okay, the flour is gonna bring it all together. So if you see that the mixture is broken, don't panic. I'm gonna let that incorporate for just one minute. Okay, so that's really well mixed right now. Everything's combined. We're gonna dump our dry ingredients in. This smells so good. Whenever you add spices into the dry mixture, oh, it just smells amazing. Mix on low until almost combined. It's okay to see some streaks here and there. We're gonna finish this off by hand. So you always just give your bowl a once over with the spatula, turn that bottom around, and just make sure it's not all buttery and the flour hasn't hasn't mixed in. It's really important so the cookies are uniform, nothing becomes a melty mess. Gingerbread cookies, just like those chocolate crinkle cookies we all love, needs a lot of chill time. You can't skimp on it. So it's not gonna be a 20 minute situation. We're gonna divide this dough out into two batches and then just press it into a disc. I actually like to give my cookie dough a roll before it's chilled. One, this lets it firm up quicker and because it has more surface area, but two, it's way less work to roll it out once it's nice and firm. Into the fridge for hours to overnight, and we'll be right back. Once your dough's all chilled out, preheat that oven to 350, get some flour, and let's get to rolling. Nice and hard, but it's gonna soften up so fast. So let's work quickly. Well flouring your surface. So you really wanna go flour heavy more than for other cookies. We're gonna unwrap this. This dough is notoriously soft, but stay tuned. I'm gonna show you all my tips and tricks to get perfect little gingerbread cutout cookies. This cookie dough is gonna get rolled out to about a quarter of an inch thick. 
And I'm also gonna flour my rolling pin. Even though it's like right out of the fridge, it's not really cracking. If there is a crack or two, you just pinch them together. We're ready to cut. So grab those cookie cutters and just place them down. Just like this. Place those cookies right onto your baking sheet. We're gonna cut them all out. Any shape will do. I love these little gingerbread people, but you can do Christmas trees, snowflakes, candy canes, the works. Whenever you're making cookies and you don't wanna re-roll the dough over and over again, it's great to have different sized cookie cutters so you can really get all those scraps in and maybe just have one re-roll. Yeah, the dough's actually soft enough that you can just plop it right back together and nobody's gonna know. You really wanna have a well-floured surface so your cookies just pop right off. If they start sticking, I'm gonna tell you, it's not gonna be fun. <laughs> You're gonna be sad. You can see this has only been out for just a few minutes and my scraps are already so soft. I'm gonna see if I can give it a really quick roll. If they get too soft, you just have to go back and put them in the fridge. Our gingerbread cookies are ready to go into the oven, 350 for about 10 minutes. Smaller shapes might need a little less time. Before we decorate our cookies, I wanna give you my top gingerbread cookie decorating tips. First off, have fun. Keep it simple. These are really easy cookies, and when you overthink it and add too many things, it gets complicated and it's not gonna work out. Number two, when you're piping, don't put the piping tip directly on the cookie. Hold it up and let the icing flow and you'll control and lead the shape. And finally, use the outline to your advantage. Most of our cookies are gonna plump up a little bit. That's totally fine. You can redraw the outline of the cookie and it'll be beautiful and clean and you won't even notice that your cookie is like a little bit spread out. Royal icing, small round piping tip. This is a number three. And we're just gonna outline the edge. And if they puffed up a bit, that's okay, that just means they're gonna be delicious. So just give them a little outline. And when you're using this icing, keep your piping tip up about like half an inch and let the icing trail to where it needs to be. I have the shakiest hands, but that method lets you have a nice, beautiful, clean line. Just a couple of dots for the eyes. A little happy face. And then we can do some buttons and some zigzags on the arms and legs. So easy, and just like that, look at this cute little cookie. I'm not gonna touch it right now, but all you wanna do is have a simple, clean decoration. The candy canes are even simpler. Just give them a double stripe, and then they really become like beautiful candy canes. Look at how cute that Christmas tree is. It could be any shape you want for these cookies. One for me. That is the perfect balance of fall spices and so delicious. Hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my holiday cookie playlist.